Welcome, welcome again to the Rick Helps Real Estate Show. I try to do a weekly update once a week, give it to you on a Sunday evening, just kind of recap what we saw in real estate last week. Not that real estate changes from week to week, but one of the things that we are seeing in our market as we approach unaffordability, in fact, we're there now for the most part, um, it's an interest rate driven market. You know, people are buying the payment. And so interest rates are playing a bigger and bigger role every week as home prices tend to go up. Now, they're not flying off the shelf when it comes to price acceleration, excuse me, uh, but we're, we're doing okay. Not the doom and gloom that many have predicted in this week was uh, kind of an interesting one. Let me roll through some of the numbers that we saw because the first number that came out was the PPI, Producer Price Index, for all commodities. And it, it's been showing a bit of an upward trend. Um, and there was March and here's April. And that's, that was concerning to uh, traders saying, well, the Producer Price Index is, you know, the stuff that they make the cost of materials has gone up and that sometimes is a leading indicator that down the road inflation's going to be slightly higher if that number keeps going up so the bond traders this week said oh boy that was on tuesday that's uh that's a shock i wonder what cpi is going to look like tomorrow and then wednesday the cpi came out and actually it was better than projected here's from the federal reserve here and the cpi went went down well, that made the bond traders go, okay, okay, that's that's not as bad as that we thought it was on Tuesday. And so rates kind of reflected that a little bit here. You can see that they uh, there was some downward movement from 7.17 down to 7.02. We even got below 7% uh, for one day down to about 6.99. And I'm telling you about the chart. And I didn't show it to you. So there it is right there. So we did see some improvement in mortgage rates over the week, but not huge. But what we are seeing is, you know, the central bank has been saying for a long time that we're going to stay here higher for longer. And the bond market was kind of bucking that system saying, nope, we, we're expecting four to six rate cuts this year. Now they're finally coming to terms with it this week going, okay, well, I, you know, maybe we'll get one cut, maybe none. And so they're just coming to terms with it. And the numbers are reflecting that for those that are saying, well, it's an election year. They're going to make bold moves and, uh, you know, to keep this president in office. Well, they'd have to be doing that now because it is May and it takes time for money to circulate. So do they really want to lower rates and reignite inflation for a political move? That's looking less and less likely. Now, there's some other things going on out there uh, in our market, and one is that our inventory is still pretty much flat. You can see here, according to the Cromford Index, where it's 16,031, it's going up about maybe 100 a week and driven primarily by new listings that kind of spiked up here about a week and a half ago. It has since come down. So this gap between the two here, the number of homes that are under contract, number of new listings coming out, still hanging in the mid 70s, 74 percent. So that that doesn't mean that prices come down. You get in the 60s, then you got pricing pressure on the downward side. But with rates making a move and tapping below seven percent, you know VA loans right now are running about six point five. Um, that supports the market, and I'm. I'm going to guess here, and I, I don't go out very long term, as you know, but I think we're going to see this number. I'm going to draw my little red line here. I think we're going to see it go up a little bit. I think we're going to see it start coming back down. Not major, but I don't see it going this way just because of rates. Are rates great? No. Are they better? Yep. And our market has reached what we officially call a balanced market here in total. There are some cities like Chandler and Gilbert where clearly advantaged sellers. Right now, 110 is considered a balanced market. Look where we're at. I mean, it's just flat. We're just hanging in there, folks. Now, in real estate, being steady is, is good. It's better for buyers. It's better for sellers. It's easier for bond traders to make decisions when you're going up and down like this and, and the volatility of the CPI. See this here, that number 
that base number here, that's 2022. It just, the market just fell like a rock. And then you go back here to 2021, you can see it started going way up. And our CPI number reached a peak up here of almost 520, 514. Keep in mind that anything around 110 is considered balanced for both sellers and buyers. And when we were up 514, that's when you just couldn't get into a house. Uh, made things a little tough. The other concerning thing that people are seeing and talking about uh, seems more and more this week uh, that hasn't affected us here in Arizona, but uh, nationally, a lot of chatter about consumer debt service payments, people falling behind. And you can see here where it is. It's really not that alarming. Uh, it's climbing slightly nationally, uh, but it's making it's making headlines. So people are going to talk about that more and more as we as we move forward. Um, the market here in Arizona, um, we're still seeing the areas where new construction is, like Buckeye and Maricopa and Queen Creek, uh, are now a buyer's market because uh, you're competing on resale with with new builds. Now on the Friday show with Pat and with uh, Jessica was on with us and we were talking about new builds and swimming pools. Do they include swimming pools? And they don't um, because they don't package them in the loans like they used to. So if you're buying a new build and you want to put in a pool, you got to foot the bill. Well, that makes existing homes, resale homes much more attractive if you want a pool because the pool is already there and you're not going to have to spend 50, 60 grand to put a, put a pool in. Are houses with pools, do they appraise higher than houses without pools? Uh, the, sh the secret is out, uh, no. <laughs> they don't, but for you, a buyer, if you want a pool, uh, you're better off getting a resale home and getting that existing swimming pool versus getting a new home and putting one in yourself. And people are finding that more and more. Also, I wanted to share with you something that I teed up on our website here, rickhelps.com, and that is right here at the top on the banner you can download a recent market report that's put together by tom ruff who's with with our association here in phoenix and uh, he includes all the statistics here for our market so you can download that today i'll try to keep that updated for you every time it comes out has a lot of details if you're a data wonk person you're going to like this it's got some commentary um, and uh, where we're in a rate sensitive environment we just spoke about that um, here's some new facts. So peak season, it just goes on and on. House hacking. I think you're going to find it a nice read. So it just takes you there uh, to rickhelps.com. Go to rickhelps.com, download it. It pulls it off my Google Drive and you can have it. You don't have to put in your email. You don't have to sign up. It's a freebie. I think you'll enjoy the information that it shares. Coming up this next week, nothing. There's no data coming out. There's no more CPI. There's no unemployment numbers. It's going to be quiet. So it looks like rates are just going to hover and stay. It's going to be a little bit of a holiday for bond traders because they're not hanging on every word. Now, you might have some Fed chairmen come out and say something that may make bond traders go, ooh, and react a little bit, or they may just be as quiet as a church mouse. So that's what we're facing in the upcoming week. Not a whole lot of market news. So we'll meet back next week uh, and see what happens. Thanks for watching. Take care.